I hope that you get something out of it. It's uh, last, oh, about the last three years, uh, my life has been in a, an upward spiral coming from a place that uh, Brother Ed was preaching on the prodigal son, I understood exactly what he was talking about because I'd been down in the muck and the mire. I'd, uh, I'd uh, left a place that was wonderful to follow a place that led me to the muck and the mire. And, uh, and just like the prodigal son, Father forgave me, and through that, he has showed me a lot of things that I never seen before. Even all the years I was pastor, and I really never understood things in my life, especially things about Jesus that we <coughs> overlook. You know, we we talk about the cross. We most of the time the cross is only preached on. Good Friday. Most churches never hear much about it. But tonight I want to, I want to try to share with you the uh, seven words of Jesus from the cross are profound and reflect his own words. And they will show you that they show forgiveness, salvation, love, Atonement, atonement, suffering, victory, and security. But if you're opening your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, but the, the thought I want to preach on tonight is the seven last sayings of Jesus while he was on the cross. While he was on the cross. Because I believe that the only way that we can have a walk, I mean, not just I know Jesus, I'm talking about a walk with Jesus, just like it would be just closer than a brother. And tonight I hope that I can share with you what God has gave me in this last three years of letting me see where I really need to be with him. But I, as I come to you, it says, and I, brethren, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, and, and I, brethren, when I come to you, come not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I am determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you, and I, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in a demonstration of the spirit and the power that your faith shall not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in mystery, even in the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor either have entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. 
For what man knows the spirit of God, save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us, which things are also spoke. We also we speak not into the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Mm -hmm. We, myself and many other Christians, try to serve God in the flesh. Our hearts wants to serve God. But we've got to have the heart and the mind of God to understand what God is saying. And if our spirit is not where it needs to be with God, then you're not gonna you're gonna miss so much of the blessing that God wants us to have. I mean, all we're doing is reaching the just the hem of the garment. There's so much more that God wants me and you to have. So much in there. That's how come it was on the cross. What did he say? He said, Father, let's look at the, one of the things he says. He said, Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. That's in Luke 23. We've all read that. Those who crucified Jesus was not aware of the full scope what they was doing because they did not recognize him as the Messiah. By their ignorance of the divine, by their ignorance of the divine truth, did not mean they deserved forgiveness. Christ prayed in the midst of their mockery. God forgive them. Now just imagine, he's come, he's done men whooped beyond recognition, beat, and then they nail him to this cross. They mock him. They do everything that you could possibly think they could do. They disgraced him by crucifying him between two thieves. All of this, all this was going on. Everything was happening. God was, he was dying. He was dying for our sins. He was doing everything. But what was it his thought? Now remember, he's man. He's also God. But his thought was, if Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And we have problems today forgiving one another over little bitty things that don't mount to a hill of beans. I guarantee you there's people that's mad at people and they can't even remember what they're mad at them about. But Jesus gave, forgave all of them. There was, there was no reason why he should give them. But he forgave. He wanted his father to know, forgive them. Don't hold that to, on them. Put it all on me. Let me do what I have to do. Let me be what I need to be. So we see here, the next thing he says, remember the two thieves was on the cross? Thou shalt not, thou shalt, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, you remember what was happening? He was mocking him, right? They was, this one thief was on one side, and even this one that said he would be in paradise. He was too, and he realized. Now this man was on this cross for nothing. We was up here because we have done something. We deserve to be up here. But this man was there for nothing. And this, you know, this thief heard him Ask the Father to forgive the ones that did all this to him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Just imagine what went through his mind. This other one's still mocking. But this guy realized who he really was. This guy, in this passage, Jesus assures one of the criminals that the cross with him, that when he died, he would be with Jesus in heaven. Amen? Amen. He assured him that. And, and the reason he was the criminal, though, because he was impressed by, he, he seen what was happening, and he knew Jesus was truly the Son of God. And he accepted him. Amen?
Amen. Now we know who he is. He forgave me and you didn't. You hear the song, Mercy? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that song well. Mercy. Mm -hmm. God gave us mercy, just like he did the man on the cross. Mm -hmm. We deserve to be on that cross. Right. We're the ones that should have took the pill. But no, no, no. The Lord tells him, today you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. Not a, not at all he was mocking him, making fun of him. What did he do? He forgave him. Now look what he does when he says, next thing he says, woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy woman. Now when he calls a woman, it's out of respect. It wasn't being, because that was a, a term they used for a, a woman that was worthy. Woman. Now this was, Jesus looked that at, uh, looked from the cross, Going through all that. And just imagine what his mother was thinking. Now this is his mama. He's still man. All this was going on. Her son been beat. Nailed this cross. Spit on. Everything. But his concern was not all the pain. His concern was who's going to take care of his mama. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We have people today say they love Jesus and see their Baba years. Amen. I'd love to see my mama. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Mama goes. It hurts. You better spend time with mama what you can. Jesus. But he was he was more concerned who was going to take care of us. And Jesus, the oldest son, his responsibility as a Jew, take care of his mother. They passed it on down. He knew John would take care of his mother. He knew she was there. So he could, his earthly part could know that his mother was took care of. Thinking about more somebody else other than himself. Oh, we say we love the Lord. We say we want to be just like him. Do we think about other people more than we do ourselves? Do we put ourselves first? Yeah. I'm gonna tell you what, let me tell you something on myself. I'll tell you this right here. This afternoon. I've been running like a wild in it. And I'm tired. I'm not as young as I used to be. I ain't catching up with them. When they called me, I thought, I said, Mary, I told Cheryl, I said, we sitting at the table. I said, you know, I just go over and see them more. I was tired. I said, well, I got to do this tonight. Well, I want to sit there. I said, no, no, no. I need to be doing the Father's business. Yes. He'll give me rest later. Amen. Amen. He'll give me what I need later. Amen. So sometimes, you know, it's like he, he was concerned about someone else other than himself. I believe if you want to, if you want to walk with God, and you're going to have to have the love for other people, you're going to have concern. You've got to be able to, to understand what that person's going through. Everybody has some kind of problem. But we ruffle through life so quick bump it, and we don't ask nobody nothing. Not really. How you doing? Hi, hi, hi. We go so much, and when somebody has something wants to talk to us, we're too busy to talk to them. We're too tired. We're too this, we're too that. What if Jesus had said, oh, Father, I just don't believe I'm going to put up all this here. I'm tired. You know? But no, 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 he didn't do that. So, we see compassion. He made it clear that his mother was took care of. And then we see when it says, Eli, Eli, Lama Sebastiane. That's, that's to say, my God, my God, why has God forsaken me? Now what has happened here? Here, all the sin had come on Jesus. Everything that me and you and everybody else has done, and it was on him. And the old devil was a jumping. He was a hopping. He was having a good time. Because he thought, well, we're fixing to wipe him out. Father says he can't look upon sin. Says he can't look at it because God can't look on sin. So he had to turn his back on his darling son. Just imagine how hard that was. Not only for 
Jesus to know that he was alone. I don't know if you've ever felt completely alone. That's the first time Jesus has ever been separated from the Father. Amen? He'd always been there. And now the Father had turned his back. Turned his back on him. You know, he's, he realized that he forsaken him, but he also realized that he was doing this for the Father's glory. Amen? So he took it. He took it. And he just let it go. Sometimes we had to do things to glory God, not ourselves. You know, Sometimes our friends will turn our back on us. I remember when I first got saved, boy, I lost a truckload of friends. I quit buying blue light. Amen? <laughs> it was gone. Well, let me tell you something. Our Father, our Jesus, he was there. He was going to stay. God could not look upon him at all. So God had turned his back on him. Now, I've been there where God couldn't look upon me. I've been so deep in sin, my friend, that God, I couldn't get a hold of him. I tried to get a hold of him. But I just kept doing what I was doing. I wasn't changing nothing. I was calling for help, but I was still eating the muck in the mar. Boy, I tell you what, I like swine. Take me long, stay there. I like it. God Stay with me all the way through it. Amen. So you gotta realize, you gotta realize that when you're alone, sometimes God just makes you see the things that you really need to see in your own life. Now through this walk, through Jesus, I started looking at myself. I always say, well, you know. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. And I could justify it. Oh, we live in a different world. Nobody is supposed to walk around and try not to do all this stuff everybody else is doing. It's not that bad. I made excuses for it. Amen? Mm -hmm. But with the walk with God, the close walk I'm talking about, you've got to own up to some of those things. I had to get down on my face on many a day and ask God, do you hear me? Do you hear me, God? Because I'm, I'm ready to come home. I'm ready to come home. But God made me get all the way down. He made me feel totally alone. I think, think anybody was out there. And then God said, Brother Tim, to my door. I would be home. And the very next week, God put it on my heart to come to this church. I wouldn't even go in church. Man. But I had to hit the bottom to be able to walk for the walk that I wanted to walk because I knew that there was a better place to be than just going through life. They say, well, you got to do better. you got to do better. This is the where to do it. That trip back to Calvary, reminding ourselves what Jesus has did. Because the closer you get to Calvary, the closer you get to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Is there things in my life that's not right? Sure. But I'll tell you what, my walk is so much sweeter to me than it's been in a long time, my friends. Amen. I mean, I can walk down the road and got a jingle and a jingle and I'm a shout and I'm a holler because I know what Jesus did for me. Amen. And he gave me, remember where he says, I thirst, you know, and uh, at this time when he says I thirst, a lot of people, you know, he goes back where they've said they had gone and uh, it's, uh, here it is. It, uh, he says, I thirst. Jesus was here fulfilling the, the prophecy from Psalm 69, 21, which says, they put gall, gall in my food and give me vinegar for my thirst by saying he was thirst. He promoted, promoted the Roman guard to give him the vinegar, which was custom, customary at a crucifixion. And that fulfilled the prophecy that I thirst. Now, he probably 
did thirst, but I believe, and I've read, and I believe this, that when he says he's thirsty, he thirsts as a man, but thirst, you should have a thirst for Jesus in your life. You should want to drink the living water, to come to him, to need a, a cool drink of Jesus every morning. You know, we jump up so quick and we don't take a drink of Jesus. The time we get to the corner, we got cotton mouth. Amen? <laughs> and I've got it now. <laughs> but through this here, Jesus, now look, he forgave them. He showed us that we need to thirst him. He showed us how to take care of one another. He showed us all these things. And then he says, it is finished. Jesus' last words meant that his suffering was over and that the whole works of his Father had given him today, which was to preach the gospel, work miracles, and obtain eternal salvation. For his people was, was uh, done, accomplished, he, his, maybe, it, for his people, it was done, he accomplished, fulfilled, the debt of sin had been paid when he said it was finished. It was over with. Mm -hmm. He did everything he was supposed to do. He died on that cross. He took all of our sins. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to treat each other. My goodness, we live in a world today that dog eat dog all the time. You know, we don't realize just really how good we've got it out here. Mm -hmm. Go to a big city and live, mm -hmm. and you watch the anger that's in people. Now me, when I started to walk these steps back, I seen a lot of things that I believe that I could do without. And that's the hustle and bustle of this old world. Mm -hmm. I can deal in it, but I don't have to become part of it. I can go to all these places they say you got to go. I can do it, but I still don't have to be part of it. <coughs> I believe through this walk that God has showed me, I can walk in any place. And I believe God's built an edge around me. It shows who I am. I'm not just somebody. I'm God's man. Amen. He called me to preach his word. Mm -hmm. My testimony means how strong God is. So if my testimony is not right, and your testimony is not right, it's saying that we serve a weak God. Amen? <laughs> Hold yourself accountable. That's what you've got to do to understand the walk. You know, we always want to get closer, but we ask how. How do we get closer? Look what Jesus said. He's finished. Took care of all of it. He was dead. That old life is gone. It's finished. Now it's a brand new life for me and you. Mm -hmm. So many Christians today have been married. For, uh, no, I wasn't married. I <laughs> wouldn't have been, been in church for 40 years, but they've lost their zeal. Mm -hmm. They've lost their joy. They've lost their walk. And, and it's not anything that they've done other than just totally not walk with God like they used to walk with God. That's how come our churches are dead today. Because we come, we gather in, we look around, we got a good crowd, we walk out the door, what do we get? Where are we going to take it? What are we going to do? How, how is this going to affect me in my day-to-day -day life? I'm a Christian and I want to live like a Christian. So therefore I need to walk like a Christian to claim that I'm a Christian. When I tell you what, when I was a backslider, and boy, I was a slitter all the way there. <laughs> Let me tell you, I didn't even act like I knew God. Why? Because I was ashamed of who I was. Mm -hmm. Somebody come up and ask me to pray. Boy, I stumbled there for 30 minutes trying to find the word. And I, they walk <laughs> off and I say to myself, well, they thought you prayed for them. God isn't listening to you. 
Tell you something, my friend, and you watch what I'm saying. I'm trying to help, not trying to scold nobody, I'm trying to help you because Jesus showed us these things as his walk. Look, all the time Jesus lived, he showed us an example how to walk. Now, if Jesus didn't think we could walk it, he wouldn't have showed us. Mm -hmm. Is that right, brother? Mm -hmm. He showed us. And he gives us the power. How did he give us the power? By the Holy Spirit. How do we understand anything with God? By the Holy Spirit. How does God use you? Through the Holy Spirit, he guides you in that spot, puts you in a place. Just like yesterday when I was making that walk, I had no idea. I was walking around there and watching God answer a prayer that I've been praying for three years that my friend get saved, hey amen. I had no, I didn't go down there for that. I went down there just because I hadn't seen him in a couple of days. See how? By the Spirit. Now, when I was walking, I normally just walk on by. But that morning, I said, boy, ain't nobody up there. Why don't you just walk in there? Sure as a world, this old boy says, you know, I'm fixing to go back up north. I said, well, why I've got you here, and there ain't nobody around, let me ask you about your salvation. Do you know Jesus? He says, well, I think I do. I said, you don't think it, you know it. If you don't know it, you need to let me show you. Amen. Amen. God was on me. I tell you, it wasn't me. God was on me. I said, oh, Lord. And that old boy, he, he, don't, he just stubbed around. Boom. He grabbed his head and he asked God to save him right there in his kitchen table. Amen. 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 In the spirit. Here we see the next last thing. It says, Father, into thy hands I command my spirit. And you see, he commanded his own spirit. Jesus, could, Jesus gave his life. They didn't take his life. He gave his life. So when it was over, he commanded his spirit back to the Father. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Here Jesus wouldn't give up his soul into his Father's hands, indicating that it was about to die. And that God had accepted his sacrifice. He offered up himself unblemished unto God. Now, I don't know about you, but I figured there ain't going to be too many more days. I'm going to be beating the Lord. You know, I tried to slow them years down. But I don't want to meet him with egg on my face. I don't care what anybody thinks. Do that. They say, well, oh boy, he's just one of them Jesus freaks, and I am. Amen. 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 And I may be peculiar, but let me tell you something, my friends. When they need one of them Jesus freaks, you're the first one they call. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. So that's our job. Because I believe we are to spread the gospel, but I also believe that Jesus is showing us that we need to. Be more concerned about the people around us. I'm not talking giving, giving. I'm talking personal time with people. Getting to know people. My goodness, we live in a community, and you probably the biggest part of it don't know three people live on the road. Amen? Been living there for years. Is that Christian? <clears throat> You can ask, you can ask Kathy, everybody in the neighborhood knows me. Everybody in the neighborhood knows me because I want, I want them to know me. I want to know them. I want to become their friend. I want to tell them about the Lord. I want to show them because this, my neighborhood is the greatest neighborhood for me to show people that because they have seen me at the other end of the spectrum. And they have seen me for the last three years through the power of God, nothing of my own, I guarantee you, walk back through. And that's the reason God allowed me to be there in the birthing room when my friend got saved. Amen? Amen. Bless me. Bless me. That was great. Sorry, I just keep... <coughs> Boy, I tell you, if you ever been praying with somebody and God just... Ooh, that's you pray and you just know God did it. You know, you don't have to worry about his God. Oh Lord, I love you, Pete Culture, man. But I wanted to share that with you because I just I see people struggling 
And sometimes I go by and I'm, I'm just so filled up. And sometimes I get, well, maybe I need to tone it down a little bit, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, I was up there in the hospital, you know, my friend in there. But it, I was just still excited about it. But I think that's the way God wants us to be. He, I, God don't want us to be all in the darkness. He wants us to be in the light, Amen. to understand each other, to communicate with each other. Or they come up with these kids, or kids can't even talk to one another. I've seen a couple of them, they one of them go here on the wood. Who you talking to the wood? That's where we're at. And through a walk with Jesus, a close walk with Jesus, wherever, whatever it takes you to get to where you need to be, take the time to go there. Let me tell you, it is well worth the trip. Because God has showed me more wonderful things. Simple things in my life that I used to just rush by everything and just always on the go and now I can sit out there and watch caterpillar for two and a half hours if I want to. <laughs> Amen. Would God give me a message on that caterpillar? Amen. <laughs> so what I say is if you get to where you feel like you're just going through the motions ask yourself I have something in me that I know has been bothering me for a long time. Or if I feel like I just don't get the zeal that I used to get. This is what I did. Lord, if you can still use me in any way, I'm here. And I prayed that every morning. And now, he answers my prayers, buddy, because I'm been on the go. But you know what? It's not work. It's, it's every time he sends me somewhere, it's joy because I know it's there where I get there, God's going to show me a blessing. God's going to do something. I went over there saying Brother James' house the other night. Boy, I'll tell you what, you ought to see James cut loose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a good time over in there. James got a beautiful heart. Yes, he does. He's truly, truly a blessed man. You look at so how can you, you can look in his eyes mm -hmm. and tell that God has blessed him beyond anything that most of us will ever know. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that that we miss when we're so wrapped up. And we say, well, I'm gonna slow down when I get over, we'll look around. We all there. <laughs> Ain't a young person in the church. Oh, excuse me, honey. <laughs> well, tell me. Why? I just think we, there's so much more for us than what we are letting ourselves have. And this, this walk that God has took me on and is taking me on. And you know, it, it just just keeps blessing me, you know. He turned around, you know, he give me Cheryl. And let me tell you something. I'm going to brag on Cheryl a little bit. Good. I was in the, we was going another day, so we got God and Spirit works. Talking to a friend. friend. Her friend called her on the phone. While we was talking, Cheryl came out and said, asked him, he was saved right off the bat, was talking to it. Amen. Now, that's Cheryl's a young Christian. But that shows the work and the power of God can use you. And she's got, God has just picked her, you know, and I was praying, you know, this, you, this whatever used, just used me, and boy, he's given me Cheryl to work with me, and we've become great friends, and we've got, God has just used, we was talking about today, God has just blessed us, this ministry. Every time we turn around, he just blessed us, blessed us. Amen. 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 I want to share that with you because God is doing stuff. I mean, it's just amazing all the blessing that God is doing just in this area here. You know, we, we hear about people just one thing after another. It's just hard to, and I say, what do you think about that? I say, well, I think it's great. I think it's great because we, us, is the ones that need the spread. I know none of us have trouble talking. Amen. 
And I know ain't none of us going to knock on no door. But I know none of us know a whole bunch of people. And, and I'm not trying to get you to go. With, I'm just trying to show you if you open the door and show them that you're just your friend, you're concerned about them, and you want to be their friend, you'd be surprised how many people will ask you about Jesus. You'd be surprised about it. And you don't have to. And there's, there's, there's multitudes of people in this area right here that we could just get in. And once we get, that gets in your heart to be a soul winner. Lord, there is nothing better than leading somebody to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nothing better. To be there when someone is born into the family of God. The feeling that you get. I mean, every time I lead somebody to Jesus, God just gives me that. I feel that I believe in those feelings. Boy, I tell you, I was, he had my friend got an old dog bite you every time you move, but I didn't care. <laughs> I just opened my feet anyway. But God is trying to use this church in a mighty way. And if we will let it happen, listen to it. As he tells you something, listen to it. Oh, no, I can't do that. Let me tell you what, I've done a lot of stuff I didn't think I could do. Amen? Amen. A lot of things. We can't do it except God with us. And what I'm trying to share with you is get this walk. Just quit being church members. Be a Christian. And truly understand what Christianity is. Christianity is not a punishment. It's a blessing. It's not a struggle. It's a blessing. I feel more alive now than I ever feel in my whole life. I feel everything you can think of in my body. It perked me up. <laughs> Amen? None of it gets me any higher than Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen? And you know what? I'm not ashamed of myself the next day. That's right. I don't have to wonder what did he say. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Under heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to be with us. Lord, we're not going to give an invitation tonight, but Lord, if for someone that needs you, Lord, wherever they may sit, or just touch their hearts tonight. Lord, someone's fighting something that's they've just been going through. They need a helping hand from you. Lord, we ask you, Lord, just touch us tonight, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be what you want us to be. We thank you again for all the blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.